Are you looking for React Native push notifications without Firebase? Do you not like Firebase? Do you wish there was a way to send push notifications without Firebase? Because Firebase is so complicated. They're never simple to use. Everything they build is not easy to use. Well, if you would like React Native push notifications without Firebase, this video is for you. We're going to set up push notifications in a React Native app without Firebase. It's only going to take about uh, five to 10 minutes. It's not that complicated. Uh, we're going to be using nativenotify.com. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon. We come out with videos all the time. We'll go ahead and get started. Your first step, if you haven't already, is to go to nativenotify.com. Click this sign up free button. It's free to sign up. There's no credit card required. That should take you to a page like this. You'll want to click this create an app button. Click React Native Expo. That should take you to a page like this. Um, the first thing we're going to do before we go on to this setup guide here is we're going to get Expo installed into a traditional React Native app. If you're using React Native, uh, but you don't have Expo installed, you'll want to watch this part. If you'd like to just go ahead and skip over this part, if you already have Expo installed in your app, then you can skip this part and move on to this part here. This video right here will uh, walk you through this next part. You could just watch that video uh, and go ahead and skip ahead to this part here. You, do, you don't need to set up Expo if you already have Expo set up. But if you do not already have Expo set up, you'll want to keep watching this video. We're going to go ahead and set this all up together. So your first step is you're going to want to click this link here to uh, learn how to install uh, Expo into your React Native app. It's very simple. So let's go ahead and copy this. We're just going to need to install this install Expo modules latest. Um, this is my React Native. This is just a traditional React Native app. So I'll go ahead and paste this in there. I'll say yes, yes. So you'll want to just say yes to everything. If you see things like uh, this uh, peer dependencies issues, just don't worry about them for now. We'll fix these later. All right. So it said installation was complete. So you can actually skip over this manual installation part. You don't need to worry about it uh, if this automatic installation worked. If you're having troubles and it's not working, you could go ahead and go through the manual installation. Uh, this will walk you through how to do that. But um, my uh, automatic installation worked, so I'm going to just skip over this manual installation. Um, and come down here. So from that point on, you're actually done installing uh, Expo. From then on, if you wanna install anything related to Expo, you can just say Expo install, and it'll make sure to install the correct version. Um, so we'll go ahead and from here, uh, you don't have to worry about these exclusions. Uh, you can just go on from here. Again, I'm going to put these links in the description below. The next thing that it's a good idea to do just to make sure everything's set up correctly, um, there's something called register root component. This is uh, basically, it's a way to make sure that um, Expo knows to open the app.js file as your, your main file. So first things first, it says Expo install Expo. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that, come here, paste that there, just to make sure Expo is installed. OK, and I'm going to open up my package.json just to make sure it's there. OK, it says it is there. So uh, step number two is in your app.js file or whichever file you want to be the one that's your home page that it first opens up to. Copy this import register root component. Um, for me, I want the app.js file to be the file that opens up first. So just add that to the very top right there. Um, and then come down. Uh, it'll show you an example here. Um, this register root component. Come here. Uh, copy that and just go to the bottom of the page here and just paste it like that. 
So this will make sure that whenever you open up an app using Expo, it knows that uh, your app.js file is your, your main file, the one to open up to. Um, if it's a different one, put it in whatever one is your main uh, file. So after you've done that, from here we can test out to see if our Expo uh, app is working properly. The way you can do that is using something called Expo Go. Uh, if you come back to the documentation down here uh, in step six, there's um, this app, it's called Expo Go. You can install it directly onto your phone um, or it can open up in like an Android emulator or an iOS simulator automatically. Um, and so if you're using React Native CLI, traditional React Native, you're probably used to saying something like a React Native run Android or something like that. Well, now that you're using Expo, uh, there's just a couple extra steps. And instead of using like React Native um, run Android or run iOS, you'll just say Expo start, and then you'll run the app that way. Um, and so we'll just go ahead and do this together so that it makes sense. So here's my app. I want to just make sure everything's working right with Expo. So um, the way to test out your apps and um, see everything on an emulator or a simulator, you would say uh, Expo start. And Expo now can take over uh, running your app. So it, it'll open it up in something like this. Uh, and then over here, uh, I currently have an Android emulator open, but if you have an iOS simulator open, you can say run iOS simulator. Uh, I'm going to click run Android device emulator and it should open up my app um, properly. All right. And so there you go. So that's how you uh, make changes now that you have Expo in your app. You're going to want to do it this way. Um, and then whenever you're ready to create your file, uh, Expo can actually do that for you too. Um, and I'll just real fast show you how to do that. Uh, I'll make another video on this at some point. I think I already have actually. It's called EAS Build Walkthrough. Here's a video that'll walk you through EAS Build for Android. But basically, uh, whenever you're ready to send your app to the App Store, you would just say EAS Build. Um, and then you pick your platform, Android or iOS, and it walks you through everything. I won't go through that in this video because it's not necessary. But um, I just wanted to give you a brief overview. If you uh, started out using React Native, uh, you're not used to Expo. Th that's the basics of, of how Expo works. Everything else is the same. Um, but just to see your app, you'll want to use Expo Start. Um, and then whenever you make a change, it'll uh, automatically you can just refresh your app by clicking the R button. All right, so that's all you have to do to go ahead and move on. Uh, you officially have uh, the you officially have Expo installed in your React Native app. So we can go ahead and go to the next step. And this next step only takes about a minute, so it'll be real fast. So go ahead and copy these here. Come to your terminal, paste those there. All right, and step two, import this register in in push token. So just come up here, paste that there. Uh, step three, this is important. Make sure your app.js file is a hook function. So it needs to look like this, like export default function app. Um, and you'll notice I already have it like that in my app.js function. It needs to be a hook function or uh, push notifications won't work properly. A lot of things with Expo specifically won't work unless you're using a hook function. If you're not sure how hook functions work, this link right here goes through it. It's super simple. Uh, I also made a video about it right there. You can watch that video to learn how hooks work. I'm already using a hook. So the last step is just copy this uh, function. You'll notice your app uh, ID and your app token are already in there for you. Just come up here, paste that right there and you're done. We can go ahead and test out push notifications. So you can just copy Expo Start. Come here, type in Expo Start. 
that'll open up your terminal again. Uh, go ahead and click on, oh, uh, before we go on, it needs to be an Android emulator for the push notifications to work, uh, or it can be an iOS, an actual phone, or an Android phone. Um, and it should be with Expo Go, with the Expo Go app. So um, your first step is Expo Start. Second step is open up Expo Go, either on an iOS phone, an Android phone, or an Android emulator. Um, and just to show you what I mean here, let me make my uh, screen a little bigger. Um, if you want to do it on a phone, there's uh, you'll see right there, there's an app called Expo Go. That's uh, this link here. You can click there to download it directly onto your phone if you'd like, and it'll look something uh, like this when you open it up. If you want to open up your app on your phone, you can just scan this, but I've got my Android emulator open, so I'm just going to run it on an Android emulator. So you can just click that button run on Android emulator. And if it ever does this, another option is you can just click the, uh, the name of your project. All right, and there it is. So one of the ways you can know push notifications were set up properly is you can come down here to your terminal and it says you can now send a push notification. You successfully registered. So we'll go ahead and come back to the instructions. And step seven is go ahead and send yourself a test push notification. So I'll say test title, test message. All right, it says it was successfully sent. Let's come back and see. All right, and there it was, it was successfully sent. So you can click on that and it opens up your app. So uh, yeah, that's push notifications. Here's just some other uh, features before we go. Uh, so what you just did gets you ready for development mode to start testing out your app in Expo Go. Um, before you go live in production mode, there's a few extra steps for Android and iOS. This setup guide here will walk you through uh, what you have to do for an Android. All we basically need is a Firebase server key it, and you just paste it there. It's already ready to go for production. Um, it'll also walk you through the iOS setup guide. We basically just need some information here that'll get you ready for iOS production. Um, and there's also some other cool features here. There's a notification inbox. A notification inbox is basically like an email inbox, but instead of collecting emails in an inbox, it collects notifications. So all the push notifications that you send out to your, your uh, users are collected inside of an inbox that can show up inside of your app. It looks a lot like an, an email inbox again. Uh, you can watch this video here to, it'll walk you through that. Uh, there's indie push notifications. Uh, so what we just did will get you ready to send push notifications to everybody. So you can send push notifications to all of your users at once just by coming up here to the send page. You can send your push notifications this way. Um, indie push notifications are for individuals. So like single users. So if you want to programmatically send push notifications to individual users, this uh, setup guide here will walk you through that. It's super simple. You can be up and running in like five minutes. Um, then there's the indie notification inbox. Uh, this is, uh, it's like, it's, it's another notification inbox, but it's for individuals. So um, the indie notification inbox, it'll collect all the push notifications sent to everybody. And it'll also collect the notifications sent to each individual user. Um, so if you send a push notification to a, an individual, it'll automatically go to their indie notification inbox. Um, this makes it feel a lot more like a notification inbox, like on Facebook or something like that. Um, and it also gives you the user the control over deleting uh, notifications inside of their uh, notification inbox. And you can also let the user know how many unread messages are in their notification inbox. So if there's three unread messages in their notification inbox, they can uh, see a little red dot with a number over it showing 
how many unread notifications are in their notification inbox. It's super simple too, doesn't take a long time to set up. Follow push notifications really is like, um, gives you a way to set up a social network in like under 30 minutes. Um, you can have your users following each other um, and then users can send out push notifications to all their followers. Um, another way you could use this is to sort of like create groups instead of um, like a follow, they're called follow masters. Um, you could also think of a follow master as like a group. You could create a group of people to collect them into uh, smaller groups called follow masters. So you could use this as a grouping feature too. Eventually we're gonna come out with another instruction guide on how to do that better. But um, that's sort of a, a hack to create groups is you could use this follow push setup guide to do that, or you could use it to create a social network. Um, this video walks you through that. Last is there's also a basic analytics program um, that uh, you can use here to get up and running in under five minutes. It'll show you how many total views each of your screens are getting, and it'll show you uh, the number of unique views. So if one user uh, views a page 10 times or something, uh, it'll only count as one unique view, but 10 total views. Um, so that's how that works. Um, over here, this shows you what uh, notifications will show up in your notification inbox. Uh, once you set up um, your analytics, this page here will show the reports for your analytics, your daily, weekly, monthly, yearly reports. Um, and this settings page is just another place you can go to update your uh, Android Firebase server key, your iOS push notification settings that you uh, add in during the setup guide here. Uh, and last thing, you can update the name of your um, app here. I'm going to call this React Native CLI app, and you can update it that way. So that's an overview of uh, React Native. It also works in Flutter. If you ever use Flutter or you know somebody who uh, uses Flutter, you can just come create an app, click Flutter, works in Flutter too. So thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, make sure to like the video, subscribe, hit the bell icon. We come out with videos all the time. Thanks for watching the video. I'll see you next time.